Hi, I'm Monica and welcome to my reading log for The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. So I'm actually quite excited to start this book and with me starting my venture into dark academia, I didn't want to pick this one up that had a lot of mixed reviews and controversial opinions. I don't know much about The Atlas Six but I do think it follows the same formula as other dark academia books in that we follow a group of six recently graduated college-age students and they all have magical abilities and they are competing for something called initiation which is to gain and secure a life of wealth and privilege and power. And these six candidates, they need to live and study with each other for one year but only five can make it through to initiation and one will either be eliminated and possibly killed and with that, I think there will be some minor spoilers in this vlog. I'll try my best not to spoil so much, but just a fear warning that there might be some spoilers. And let's just get right to the vlog. For my initial reaction of the Atlas 6, I'm around 10% of the way through and I'm on page 45. Right off the bat, I could tell that I am going to like this book. Despite like all the mixed things I've heard about this book, it does feel a little bit wordy, but so far, I'm really intrigued about the concept and how the world already has magic interwoven into society and how along with power and money, that magic is also an exclusive thing to the elite. Also, looking more into this book, the writing itself is definitely more adult than YA and I found out that this book is actually an adult fantasy. I'm actually happy that this book is an adult fantasy. There are six different characters that we are mainly following and I don't think there will be one main character. And so far from what we've gathered from these six characters is that they are not going to be easy to like, which again is something I do like as a concept in a book. But I'll form more of my opinion as I read more of the book and how the characters are like with interacting with each other and I think with these particular six characters living together for a year will be very very dramatic and have a lot of consequences and the title of this book is actually linked to a guy named Atlas Blakely who is someone who is rounding up all of these characters together. Each of the characters, they all have their own unique abilities that are quite rare in this world. So far, I think I will predict that I will like Libby, Nico, and Tristan. As for the other three, I think their names are Reina, Callum, and Parisia. I don't know much about them yet, but we will see. Alright, hi everyone and welcome to my second check-in. I'm around about 50% of the way through of the Atlas 6 and I think I'm on page 185. So far the book, I'm quite enjoying it and I'm very curious about what the Alexandrian library archives do hold and I'm predicting it'd be like something about alien life, maybe traveling the universe, technology, like very advanced technology. Also the magic in this world is very based on the physical and metaphysical and I think that the physics explanation of like the magic and how it works, it was very easy to understand so that's a good thing. On the world building, I do think there's a lack of world building because I do want to learn more about what is going on outside of society house that our characters are living in because it's very centered on them but I do want to see a little bit more expansion on what is going on in the outside world and we do get little snippets here and there and we are learning more about that through Nico's point of view with the many different species that apparently exist as well. And maybe I missed this, but I want to learn about how the origins of magic began. Like, do Medeans get their magic from genetics? Is it earned? Granted? And I do want to talk a little bit more about each individual character. So we do have six characters. First off, we have Nico. Through Nico, we learn about his friend Gideon being half mermaid, half human, I think. And how there was like different astral planes of thought and telepathy and 
they communicate through dreams. But with Nico, I really did enjoy the fleshing out of his character with how he cares so deeply about his friendship with Gideon and protecting him from Gideon's mother. With Nico, his powers are is more about the physical manipulation of matter. That's like the most basic level that I can explain it as. And he also really loves fighting. Next, we have Libby who has that same powers as Nico. It's kind of funny to read about Libby's anxiety being portrayed in different point of views, but I could totally relate to Libby and her anxious actions and thoughts. I did find it funny when Libby was being a literal gun <laughs> with her arms and her hands. Libby is one when she's very concentrated on something like when using her powers, research, she's very focused and very academic. I also want to mention about Nico and Libby's friendship. They're really like enemies who hate each other but then they're very reluctant that they need to work together. <laughs> So seeing their interactions is funny. Next up we have Callum who is an empath and he's very sketchy. He comes from a very wealthy background but his disregard for life is very unpleasant to read about. Like not even in a good way of how some evil characters are like I don't care about anyone's emotions but with Callum he's just He's cold straight up even though he is an empath and he has the ability to manipulate like your core values and beliefs. It's kind of like a type of mind control almost and I don't know what his motivation is yet so I'll come back to him later. <laughs> then we have Carissa who is a telepath and a very good seducer <laughs> and she also has a very strange and uncanny ability to read people. Like she chooses to fixate on Dalton and she gets very important information from him about the entire initiation process and all that and why and how one person gets eliminated. And I'm curious about Parisia's past because she mentioned something about not wanting her past to come to light. So I'm interested in that. And I do think with Parisia's character, she doesn't want anyone to get in her way and she will not hesitate to put anyone down to get what she wants and reach her goals. So she's quite ruthless in that. Next up we have Tristan who is a person who could see through illusions but now in the halfway point we are learning that he could see time, like actually see how time looks. With Tristan, he's very harsh, stubborn. I think he's the type of person who doesn't like to waste any time. With Tristan, he does come from a criminal background, like his father is a mob boss that results in him having some self-doubt about being useful and I did like that about him because the all these characters are multi-layered but Tristan is an interesting character so I'm looking forward to see how his character story will end up. Then last but not least we have Freena who is a communicator with plants. She's a naturalist. She knows mixed martial arts. She's very studious and academic driven. And other than that, Reina, she doesn't really care much about the others. She just really cares about having access to the archive of the Alexandrian library. And I'm curious about what exactly she's trying to find. And so far with all the characters, I'm very very curious about what will happen from here. But other than that, let's see where we go from here. For my last check-in, I'm finished with the book now and it seems like the last half of the book has a lot of stuff going on in terms of understanding of what's happening. There's a lot of focus on discovering that they need to eliminate someone from the group and what that actually entails meaning that they need to actually kill off one of their own, one of the six that are there. And the last half of the book does deal with all of that. And there is more talk about how the science of time and how time can look like if you were able to see that. And it was a little bit confusing. I think I got it. And we still have the six different points of views from the individuals in the group in trying to join the society. There is 
a moment where each one of them kind of grapples with the question of how far will you go to get what you most desire and does that include killing someone and a lot of them did answer yes that they would kill to maintain their status now and i think it really does tie in nicely to how each character does say yes to enter into this initiation process in the first place because they're either trying to prove something they're running away from something or they're just bored in their life like callum i really don't like callum and i was not surprised that they wanted to kill off callum because he is the least empathetic one even though he is an empath which is really ironic and i was surprised by the ending of the book and who knew that Ezra was a type of time traveler and the one who's really in depth with Atlas and the society already. Although I think he's going to be more of an antagonist figure in book two. I don't know what I'm feeling right now. I think I'm feeling the ending was a little bit dissatisfying to me or unsatisfying to me because there's a lot of build up to the ending. I felt all of that build up was fantastically done but then the ending was a little bit lackluster to me. I'll formulate more of my proper thoughts in the concluding section of this video. So I finally finished the Atlas 6 and overall it was a nice dark academia fantasy book and there's a lot to unpack here and I do want to say my final rating of this book is a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Themes that I did notice in this book was the relentless pursuit of knowledge, really self-motivated character and exploring what time can be. First, the writing of this book can be a little bit difficult to get through because it was a little bit slow and in terms of easy readability, it can be a little bit hard to get through some parts. That's when I use my audiobook to help me get through those little moments where I was struggling to get through certain parts. I also noticed that there is quite a lot of telling instead of showing in this book, especially with when in certain scenes that we are introduced to, say we're starting from a point of view of a new character and we're understanding where they are right now. And then the character then thinks back to another pivotal moment that that is relevant to the current scene. So for example, let's say Parisa is walking into the library and then she thinks, oh yeah, I had this conversation with Tristan the other day. And then it's like a flashback scene of that conversation to Tristan. And then it goes back to Parisa in the library talking to whomever. And she's like, oh yeah, um, sorry, I just spaced out for a bit. And I'm just thinking like all of these characters just space out when they're in the middle of a conversation with someone and this happens to multiple characters. I think all of them I did have that type of writing setup. That irritated me a little bit but I did get through those moments. Another point is that the world is not fully fleshed out. I definitely felt that I had to tease apart the bits and pieces that we did get for the world building and understanding where the society came from and how the world with the society is different from our modern day world. I think I struggled a bit on this one but I did really think the magic system was somewhat explained but it could have been explained more clearly because there was a lot of concept of physics and metaphysics and all those space-time continuum and relativity and all of that. I don't know much about that but I think it was explained clearly enough. Anyways, I'm gonna move on to the characters. And our characters, they are not likable, they're very insufferable and very selfish and self-motivated and they would do anything at all costs to save themselves. We do have six main characters, there's not one shining star or focal character and we do have more focus on some characters than others. I did like the exploration of the groups, relationships and friendships and romances. That was very well done because each character is fully fleshed out. They have multiple complex layers to them. They have their full out background stories presented to us. I also wish that the characters themselves hung out with each other more just in casual settings although they are all academics and brilliant minds and all that. We should have seen a couple scenes here and there of them bonding but then again they're all self-motivated and very selfish in some respects of themselves 
to pursue this society and this initiation no matter the cost. Who I did like more was Nico, Libby, and Tristan. I think I just related to those characters more and not so much of the others, Prisia, Callum, and Reyna. But overall, each character, like I said before, they're very complex. They have their own stories and you get to learn about all their personality traits and you decide who you like a bit more than the others. And in conclusion, the Atlas 6 did start off really strong for me. After the halfway point of this book, it started to wane off that excitement that I had for this story and the characters. The plot has a lot going on, especially for all the characters that we encounter. And I do like how all the characters end up being very interconnected to each other and that plays into their magic as well as their circumstances of living together for a year. With the plot, I did enjoy it but I felt like it was quite a mouthful to read through. And of course, our characters are the shining star of this book. However, we're like left behind on understanding how the world is outside of the inner circle of the society. And I think that's fine. I think there will be more world building in the sequel, which I will pick up whenever I can. But I do think I need a break before diving back into this world. So that is my thoughts on the Atlas 6. I hope you enjoy this vlog and I hope you can comment down below on what you think about the Atlas 6 and if you liked it, if you disliked it. And I'm going to end this video here. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and ring the bell to be notified of my future uploads. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye! Thank you.